coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Before we get started with today's episode, I want to take a few moments and give you a preview of what you're about to hear and also direct you to some other series that I already have uh, completed on my podcast. So you're about to listen to Blue Collar Kaizen leading lean and lean teams. You're listening to a 30 part series on that. Today's episode is just one of 30. Uh, It's specific to lean leaders, lean managers, anyone who's leading teams of people through process improvement and continuous improvement projects, Six Sigma, those kind of things. It's not about the tools and the methods and all that. It's about how to lead teams of people. So any leader, anybody at any level can get value from this. But I just want you to know that's what this series is about. It's about that specific book. So hope you enjoy it. But but I have some other series that may interest you if this series does not. I've got a lot of episodes already out there. But I have a book called Blue Collar Leadership, Leading from the Front Lines. It's all about how to become a high-impact individual, how to become an empl- a sought-after employee of choice, uh, an employee that people want to hire and want to promote. That series, there's a 30-part series, starts at episode 65. I have another series on my book, Blue Collar Leadership and Supervision, Unleash Your Team's Potential. That book is for, for leaders, formal authority leaders who want to learn how to uh, effectively lead people. That series, 30-part series, starts at episode 111. I have another series. It's an 11-part series on my book, 10 Foundational Elements of Intentional Transformation, How to Become Your Best Self. That series starts at episode 158. I have another series on my Blue Collar Leadership and Culture, The Five Components for Building High-Performance Teams. That book is really for the top leader, and it's how... How you, how do you become the sought-after employer of choice? It's a 30-part series. It begins at episode 179. My wife Rhea and I, this year in 2021, the theme for, for my podcast this year was all about change. That's why I'm doing this series on Blue Collar Kaizen, leading lean and lean teams, because it's all about leading teams through change. But we have a 15-part series we, we recorded together on our book, Change Happens. Leading Yourself and Others Through Change. That series starts at episode 211. And then this Blue Collar Kaizen Leading Lean and Lean Team series, the one you're about to listen to, one of the uh, episodes of, it started at episode 230 and will be a 30-part series. So it's going to take a little while to finish it. I hope you find value in some of these series. Let's get to today's podcast. Hello, everyone. Thanks for stopping by the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast today. Today, we made it up to chapter 21 of 30 on my series on, on my book, Blue Collar Leadership, or excuse me, Blue Collar Kaizen, Leading Lean and Lean Teams. And today, chapter 21 is titled, Avoid Answering Questions. The subtitle of this chapter is Don't Make Decisions, Facilitate Decision Making. And you may... You may have already picked up on this, but the last chapter, chapter 20, I was talking about questions. This chapter, I'm talking about questions. And actually, the next three chapters, I'm talking about questions. So actually, chapter 20 through 24 are all related to asking questions. Five chapters on how to leverage questions when leading teams. And and again, especially process improvement teams. So I want to open with a a quote from uh, Brian, I believe his name is pronounced Siafi, not really sure, C-I-O-F-F-I. But anyway, he, how to pronounce his name is not what's important. What's important is what he said. And he said this. He said, some people assume we stumble onto our success. But the path of discovery is paved with interesting questions.
questions. The path to discovery is paved with interesting questions. And as you lead a, a process improvement team, a Kaiser team, any type of team, you bring people together, you're trying to move them forward, you're trying to discover a new way or a better way. You got to be asking questions. Don't make it a one man or a one woman show just because you're the boss or you're the formal authority leader. In, engage the folks. And I'm going to tell you, when I'm leading teams, that's one of the things I like the most about leading teams. I love asking people questions. I, because what I know is I'm going to learn and they're going to learn. The other thing I know is it's going to generate buy-in. It's also going to help me connect with them to build relationships instead of me looking like that, that I'm the know-it-all. First thing I start doing is asking questions. That communicates clearly that I don't know it all and I don't think I know it all. So that's a, that's a powerful way of, of, of leading teams, any kind of team. But, you know, why, why should you ask a question that you already know the answer to? Because, see, I do that a lot. I ask a lot of questions that I already know the answer or already know an answer. Because a lot of times there's multiple answers to the same question. There's multiple solutions to the same problem. What I'm always leading the team to, to seek out and discover is what's the, what's the best answer? What's the best solution? to the problem what's the best way to improve a process during a say a five-day kaizen event five-day improvement event we ain't got six months six years we got five days what's the best thing that we can do during this five days to utilize and leverage our time to make the operation better the process better the job better for the people especially the people doing the work right and so the reason I like to ask questions that I already know the answer to is because asking questions allows team members to think for themselves and to find their own answers, which leads to buy-in. That is 100% very valuable to you as a leader. Anytime, anywhere, when you're leading people, asking them questions, <clears throat> the right questions. So I remember one time I was leading a, 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 a Lean Kaizen event and we were getting ready to go out to the to the shop floor, and it was an, uh, a, a metal forming, uh, metal assembly, fabrication type workspace. And the uh, the team, we had multiple things that we were trying to accomplish when we walked out the door. We had a pretty good sized team. One of the things we were trying to accomplish was two machines were separate. They were batch producing, so one machine would run a lot of parts and pile them up or put them in a basket or on a pallet or something like that and move them away. And then later they'd bring them back to the next machine and that machine would, you know, take them out of the pallet or out of the box, process it, put it back in another pallet or another box. And there was a, you know, a space between the two, but both of the machines were fairly small. And I had a pretty good idea that actually I knew that we could put those two machines together and, and make single piece flow. So instead of going into a, a box or a pallet or onto a pallet, a pile of parts. You take one part out of one machine instantly before you lay it down. You don't lay it down, actually. You lay it down in the next machine. So you process in single piece flow. You cut out all kind of waste. You cut out material handling, need for pallets, need for storage. You cut out opportunities for uh, a lot of uh, scrap. If I, sc if I make a bad part, I've made one bad part between the two machines. When I'm separating the machines and I'm building a lot of inventory in between those machines, I may make thousands of pieces of bad part before I even know it. But anyway, we were going out, two guys uh, accepted responsibility for figuring out how do we put these two machines together? And I asked them, you know, can you, know, you guys up to that challenge? And they were like, absolutely, we'll go out there and put our heads together and we'll figure it out. So we had, again, I was leading a, a big team, a lot of things going on. A little while later, I go out to the, to the work space, to the department where the work was actually happening. And I ask them, you know, they're standing around a machine, kind of doing nothing, really. They look like they were just out there hanging out. I walked up to them. I said, what did you guys come up with? 
they instantly started telling me all the reasons they couldn't do it. It wouldn't work. So I listened and listened and listened till they got done telling me all the reasons it wouldn't work. And I said, what am I missing, guys? And they're kind of looking at me kind of strange. I said, what am I missing? They're like, what do you mean, what do you miss? I said, back in the office before we come out here, I asked you guys if you were up for the challenge of figuring out how to do it, right? They said, yeah, yeah, that's what you asked. I said, well, when I walked up, all you did is tell me all the reasons why you couldn't do it. That, that's not the mission. That's not the mission you agreed to. I said, so how can you do it? That was the mission. Are you guys still up for that challenge? Can you figure out how to do it instead of using all your energy, figuring out how not to do it? Because everything you told me is true. We can't do it the way that you've described, those ways that you've came up with. I agree, those won't work. But that's not the challenge we gotta, we got to overcome. we got to figure out how will it work. So are you guys willing to, to stay out here and figure out how will it work? They, they say, yeah, we, we'll, we'll keep working on it. And I turned around. I walked about 10 steps. And one of them said, hey, hey, I got an idea. So I turned around, went back and listened. And the idea he said, absolutely, it would work. There was no question it would work. I said, there, there you go. Look how it took like 10 seconds. You figured out a way to make it happen. I said, keep thinking on it. There may be a better way or another way or a different way. I was like, I'll come back later. I turned around and walked off. I probably didn't get 10 more steps. The other guy said, well, how about this? And he explained his idea. And his idea would work. So now all of a sudden, they spent all this time, 30 minutes or an hour before, figuring out how it wouldn't work. They'd have spent like a minute and a half figuring out how it could work. And then they kept going. And then later they presented their idea to the entire team. The team started asking questions. I started asking questions. And we took their ideas and came up with kind of a hybrid idea of a lot of those ideas and come up with something really better. And I didn't own it. Those two guys didn't own it. The entire team owned it. It was everybody's idea. But it all started with what I taught you about a couple of episodes back, priming the pump. You got to prime the pump. That's the key piece. You got to get them ready to go on Monday and then get them ready to go every day. And then when you go out there and you're dealing with them, you're interacting with them, you're leading them, they're on your team. So that's just one example how just asking a simple, simple couple of simple questions. I didn't go out there and, and, and try to flex my muscle as a leader. I didn't give them an idea, although I had several ideas. I didn't give them my ideas. I wanted them to own it. So for them to own it, it had to be their idea. And I knew that. But when they come up with the answer, Again, you don't have to get them to buy into it. They already own it. And quite often, if you ask them questions, they may have a better answer than you do, even if you know the answer. Again, I talked about that last time. Gives you an opportunity to learn, gives them an opportunity to learn. And what I'm talking about is asking questions. So allowing others to make decisions you could make demonstrates respect for the people. One of the foundational layers of lean, continuous improvement, respect for the people, right? And I like really say respect for the people first. That's the foundational layer. We talked about that in, in the beginning of this series. But allowing others to make decisions. When you as a leader facilitate decision making, you're demonstrating respect for the people. So low impact lean leaders have a habit of making decisions and giving directions. They're on the opposite end of the spectrum. They may be accelerating results short term, but they are slowing down results long term. It's one of the big reasons. One of the big problems and challenges with lean is we can't sustain the gains. One reason companies and leaders can't sustain the gains is because, because the team and the people do not own it. They're trying to go fast. So a leader come in a leader comes in or a consultant comes in and dicks dictates what to do and how to do it and when to do it and why to do it while they're there it's all happening and then when they when they leave or walk away nobody owns it and instead of a lot of people wanting to make sure it worked because it was my idea if i don't like you i want to try to make sure it doesn't work because 
I'm trying to derail you because you haven't shown me respect. So high impact lean leaders think long term. They also think short term, but they're also thinking long term by focusing on the growth and development of others with the intent of creating a culture of Kaizen. That's what everybody wants. They want the culture of Kaizen. Talked about that earlier too in one of the early episodes when we first when I first kicked off this series. You want people who will make small changes for the better, who make rent recommendations, who improve things sometimes without even asking. They're just doing it. You don't need a Kaizen event because Kaizen really stands for small change for the better. That's when you create a culture of Kaizen, people respect people and they're constantly striving to improve processes. Whether you're holding a Kaizen event or not, it's just who they are and what they do. But asking questions is going slow to go fast. Only high impact leaders are going to slow down the process on the front end so they can go faster on the back end. Low impact leaders, they want to go fast today. Low impact consultants, they're trying to look sharp this week while they're in your facility. They may not be back for six months or three months or something like that, but while they're there, they want to look like they're a hero. And then when things fall apart and you're not there, they want to blame you. High impact leaders take responsibility. One way they do that is by asking questions to go slow so they can go fast. So giving others influence increases your influence. When you ask a question, I talked about this last time. When you ask a question, you're allowing others to influence you, which allows you to increase your influence with them. One of the greatest ways to, to increase your influence is to allow yourself to be influenced with an ED by others first. And when you ask a question, you're facilitating that process. Another thing is, you know, I hear a lot of leaders, even parents, they say, if, if you want others to think for themselves, or, or they ask me, actually, how do I get people to think for themselves? And the answer is, if you want others to think for, your, for themselves, whether it's a Kaizen team member or your children, the first thing you must do is stop thinking for them. That's common sense. If you want others, others to think for themselves, stop thinking for them. That means if you want them to think for themselves, you must stop answering their questions. It's the quickest way to get some, rid of someone who asks you a question, right? Give them an answer. A lot, of, a lot of leaders think that's what they're supposed to do. I'm just here to give you answers. High-impact leaders think I'm here to ask you questions because I want you to think. If you're having to ask me a question, you probably haven't done enough thinking. So as a lean leader, a high-impact leader of any type, when you're leading your team and there's not a fire, there's not a disaster, there's not an emergency, and you actually have time to do it, you should assume you can only lead your team with questions. Make that assumption as a leader, high impact leader. Try to make a habit that you can only lead your team with questions. That doesn't mean every single time. You don't, you don't want to sound silly. Every, no matter what somebody says, you ask a question. You, I thank you with me by now. What I'm talking about is, is when they're asking you a question, they're trying to figure out a way forward or a problem or a solution to a problem. Don't just give them the answer. Ask them a question. Assume that's the only way you can lead is by asking questions. And then do it. I'm going to leave you today with a, a quote from Liz Wiseman. Pretty good quote. Short, short, but pretty powerful. She says, a humble ask can prompt an amazing feat. A humble ass can prompt an amazing feat. So what she's saying is, even when you may be the leader and you may be the one that people think has all the answers, a humble ask, that means have humility, ask a question, and you may unleash your team's potential when it actually needed to be unleashed instead of suppressing their potential. A lot of times, answers just suppress their potential. People don't like the answer. 
And a lot of times they think they have a better idea. They just, they just haven't shared it. Don't feel comfortable sharing it. But if you're the kind of leader who constantly asks questions, people are going to be comfortable sharing answers, providing information. Think about that. Talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others now available on audio along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon, iTunes, and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, certifications, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.